In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at how you regulate blood glucose and what happens when that goes wrong, and really that's talking about diabetes. So regulating blood glucose, now blood glucose has to sit between 4 and 8 millimoles per dm cubed of blood. And there are two mechanisms in place which help to either lower blood glucose or increase blood glucose levels. So after a meal, clearly our blood sugar levels are going to be high, so we need to reduce that, and that's carried out by a hormone called insulin. So insulin, which is a hormone, is released, and you have to be nice and detailed here, from the beta cells of the pancreas. So what does that insulin cause to happen? Well, it stimulates cells in the liver and muscles to convert soluble glucose into insoluble glycogen. So the final effect is that blood glucose levels are lowered. Now, after a period of rest or exercise, for example, if you've been asleep all night, you obviously haven't eaten. So this time a second hormone is released. Notice it's spelling glucagon. That again is released from the pancreas. But instead of being released from the beta cells, it's released from alpha cells. Glucagon does the opposite of insulin, so it stimulates cells in the liver and muscles to convert insoluble glycogen into soluble glucose. And as a result, blood glucose levels increase. So this is an example of negative feedback. So when you make a change, your body has mechanisms in place which oppose that change. But what happens when that all goes wrong? Then you get a condition known as diabetes mellitus. So as a brief summary, you're unable to control blood glucose concentrations. So we're going to compare type 1 and type 2. So type 1 diabetes, it's early onset, so it occurs during childhood, whereas type 2 diabetes is late onset and it occurs during adulthood. Now they have very different causes. With type 1 diabetes, you find that it's an autoimmune disease whereby your body destroys beta cells in the pancreas, meaning that obviously insulin can no longer be secreted. Now type 2 diabetes is very different. It's nothing to do with insulin no longer being secreted. Instead what happens is that the target cells present in the liver and muscles fail to respond to insulin. They are insensitive to the insulin. In terms of treatment options, if you no longer have any insulin being released from the pancreas, clearly insulin injections will be needed and regular monitoring of blood glucose levels. So you often see people with the needles that prick their finger so they can measure their blood glucose levels constantly. Now, because the problem with type 2 diabetes is that the target cells no longer respond to insulin, clearly injecting more insulin is going to have no effect. So instead, you have to try and get your body more sensitive. And the way in which you do that is by controlling your diet, having healthier food options and doing more exercise.